welcome in limits and continuity in this video I want to talk about or at least try to answer two questions this is kind of the beginning within calculus where you start studying limits and continuity you have seen the word continuity or at least continuous and discrete if you've ever taken any kind of functions so I'm sure that you have some idea of that but what's interesting is that in order to really kind of explain the continuity concept you do need to know limits within um, some related functions so let's dive into these two questions you know does a limit exist and then is a function continuous at x is equal to a and I'll try to do that through just examples and then give you enough examples so that you can grasp these two topics and that's the goal of this particular video so first off let's start off with limit well when we're talking about trying to calculate a limit and then finding if a limit actually exists so if I'm gonna borrow this right here I'm gonna duplicate it and then bring it back now in order to answer so really what we want to know is you know does this exist and then if it exists what does this equal to and what is you know all of these different things mean here well the LIM so you know you can probably guess that means limit now this what you see X is approaching a so that you can assume that if we take a function and then we substitute here so X and then we make X you know closer and closer to a so if you kind of would imagine that you would have your x axes okay like this and this is your x axes and then you're trying to plot out okay so here I'm gonna plot out this is my y axis but because we're trying to plot this f of x so this is gonna be my f of x and let's say a so a could be somewhere on here doesn't matter where it is a negative could be zero could be positive so I'll just plunk it in here so let's say this is a and now what we're doing is we're trying to see and trying to get this particular X as close to a as we possibly can but we're not allowed to be a and that's the key whenever we see this view of X is approaching a it means that X gets closer and closer to a but it never actually is a that's the idea so if you're thinking about this and you were you know kind of thinking of okay what does this exactly mean well so this is going to be approaching and getting closer and closer to a now it can happen from both sides it can happen from the left which we call from the left hand side or it can happen from the right hand side so it can approach in two different directions so here it is approaching a from the left and here it is approaching a from the right and now since we're substituting our x into f of x so if this is you know let's say our function maybe it goes like this you know so we have this is maybe the value at f at a but we're never really getting there but what we're doing is if we are substituting back into f of x and then you know we're going along this direction at x and then or this direction and getting closer to a then what we're really doing is that we're trying to find and you know as we substitute this in if we substitute it over here you know we would find the point here if we substitute it over here we would find the point here if we substitute it over here we would find the point here and I think you get the gist we get closer and closer to really this f at a value but remember that this is a limit as we are approaching a but we're not actually finding we're not substituting a okay and you can do that also from the right so if we did it over here you know we would find this value if we did it over here we would find this value if we did it over here we'd find this value and again you know we would be approaching it in this direction now approaching from the left hand side 
um, actually has a particular designation. So this okay, designation that we just had right here that I just drew out. So the limit as x is approaching a of f of x, this can actually be divided into two things. It can be divided into the left hand side and it can be divided into the right hand side. And the way that we write that out, we say the limit of x, okay, as x is approaching a, okay, this is from the left hand side, so we put a little minus there. So that would be, okay, you know, going in this direction as we're going right here, right there. And then, okay, so we're still substituting into here. And now the other one, so from the right hand side, so we designate, it's this, it looks the same thing, and it looks like A, but except we put a little plus because we are approaching from the right hand side. And that's what we would put. And now what we want to find is we want to find what this value is. So if we take a value and then we try to substitute it, okay, you know, we want to try to find what this actual limit is as we approach from the left hand side. And then we also want to find what is the value as we approach from the right hand side. Now, how could we possibly do this? You know, let's actually take an example and let's try to see how, you know, we would be substituting, you know, what you might be maybe asking. And we can take a simple example at first. So here is an example. If we define a function, so here is maybe a quadratic, right? So let's say I have x squared right here. And then if I have this function, okay, and someone asks me, okay, well, what is the limit as x? Okay, and I will make it very specific. So we'll make this a, let's say, you know, let's say it's one. And now we want to find what that limit is, okay, of this x squared, so I'm really just substituting this into here. And in order to do that, you know, you might be able to say, well, I, can I not just substitute one into f of x and then you'll get one and that's your answer anyways. Um, yeah, sometimes you can cheat that way, but with limits, okay, we again are trying to find these two, one on the left. So if you're approaching from the left and then you're approaching from the right. And ultimately, we say that the limit exists at A, or in this case, it would exist at one, if actually the left-hand side and the right-hand side both exist, and they're equal to each other, okay? So there's actually three conditions for a limit to exist. So for this to be true, you need it to be true from the left-hand side, you need that limit to exist, you need it to exist from the right hand side and those two have to be equal. And you might say, really, like, when are they not equal? You know, if you have a function, are they always equal? You know, they're gonna be approaching the same point. Not really, because it depends um, how you define your function. And then don't forget, not all functions are very nice. You know, you might get kind of vertical asymptotes that you might be approaching and you might not even have a limit existing. So that can happen. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, for this case, if we wanted to find this, indeed, so the answer here will be one. But in order to do it the proper way, so as I do this, let me just add a page, okay, within here. So if I wanted to do this, I would be able to do it like this. So first of all, to find the limit as x okay, is approaching one, now from the left-hand side, so from the minus side, so x squared, what we like to do is, okay, we would like to say that, okay, well, as my x is going in this direction, okay, and let's say, you know, this is one, this is my x, so from the left-hand side, I'm approaching it in this direction. So what I can do is I can substitute in order to see this, okay, so happening. Really what I can say is x is equal to one, 
minus some h. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make h as small as possible. Okay, so h is approaching zero. Now you have seen this if you've studied functions, right? And if you've studied rates, for example. So this concept, notice whatever h is, right? So h is, it can be some small number. And then we just make it smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we make it really small, this value is going to get closer and closer to one, but never really touch it. So x is approaching zero, but h okay, is always greater than zero. Okay, So we have to keep that in mind. And this would be from the left-hand side. That's why I put a minus in here because okay, whenever I subtract h, h is a positive value. Um, so it's going to make that a little bit less than 1. And then we can approach it through. So if I wanted to find this in, what we do is we take this and then we substitute it into our function. So we would say f okay, at 1 minus h is equal to, now in our case, we know exactly what that is. So this would be 1 minus h squared. And now we can compute this out, you know, for h extremely small. Now, we don't actually have to, you know, utilize this square. We can see that as h is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, basically this value in the brackets is just approaching 1. And then 1 squared is still 1. So the limit, okay, from the left-hand side would exist and it would be 1. Now, if you really want to be, okay, very thorough, you can certainly expand this, right? We, we know how to do that. So that would be minus, say, 2, and this would be h, okay, and then plus h squared. That would have been the answer. And then as h approaches 0, well, this term and this term, okay, are basically going to go to zero, right? So these both two terms go to zero. So this is just one squared or one, okay, in terms of the limit, okay, that we have. And that is from the left-hand side. Now, we can do the same thing from the right-hand side. Now, from the right-hand side, I'm going to switch the color so it just pops out at you. So if we're going in this direction then what we are doing is we're going x is equal to, now it would have been 1, but it's plus h, right? h is still the same thing, so that doesn't change. You just make it smaller and smaller. But because we put plus, that means it's approaching it from the right-hand side. And then it's going to get closer and closer. And now if we substitute that in here, so if we put plus as so, then this becomes just 1, you know, plus h, squared and again you can see that it will be one or you can work the whole thing out and that would be one squared plus two h plus h squared and again this term will tend to zero and this term will tend to zero because you're making h extremely tiny so as you make it smaller and smaller in the limit as it continues on all the way down to an extremely tiny amount this basically will tend towards one. So that's what we would have. So that's what this would be. So this is going to be tending. Okay, so sometimes we write like this. So it's tending towards one. And now notice, so from the right hand side, it exists, it's equal to one. From the left hand side, it exists, and it's also equal to one. So my left hand limit, and my right hand limit, both exist, and they're equal. And what we would write is we would say this. So we would say that the limit as x is approaching 1 from the left-hand side of my function is now equivalent to the limit of the x, which is approaching 1 from the right-hand side okay, of that function. They're both equal to 1. And since they both exist, we can say that overall the limit exists because we have just shown, so we can say that, we can drop now. So notice here's from the right-hand side, from the left-hand side. Now I've dropped it, and I just said that, and I can conclude that it is equal to 1, 
because the left and the right are equivalent. That's how we would actually formally show you know, the entire thing. So when we are trying to understand these limits, we do actually have two things, limit from the left and then limit from the right. Now, very often what will happen is that when we are solving this, you will find that somebody is going to be working out, working this out, and they may not necessarily put the left and the right. They will just simply write, okay, that, and then when they're going to be substituting this, they're just going to assume that this H, okay, that we have can take on both positive and negative values that are tending towards zero. And as they're tending towards zero, okay, then, you know, when you do this substitution, you would have, so if this was x squared, and then we would substitute into this, you know, we'd say one plus h, right? We did plus h and minus h. Most of the time, people will just substitute plus h, and that's gonna give you one, this, and of course, we've just worked this out already, so we know that this is that. And now, regardless from the left or the right, okay, so if h is getting smaller and smaller, so it's tending towards zero, and it's both positive and negative, okay, then this is tending towards one. So you will see that as well, okay, as people are working this thing out. Now, so that's a lot of information for you, okay, with regards to these limits. Now, I wanna give you some examples so that we can try to calculate these limits and then see what's happening. And then hopefully you'll start understanding this more and more and know, okay, if, do, do the limits exist or not? So here are basically three examples that I have for you. So let's take the first one. This is example number one. I'm gonna just copy it. So let me copy it, bring it down, and then we're gonna talk about these limits, okay? So here's my function, so this is F1, okay? So I've redefined it as F1, and you know, I am giving you this. Now notice, so two X plus three, that would have been just a line, but we are dividing by X. So the first thing that I noticed that, ooh, well, X cannot be equal to zero because it would make the function undefined. So that's just coming from functions. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, if they're trying, okay, to get me to find the limit, now in this case, what is the limit as x is approaching to two? You know, so how could I do that? So again, so in order to show this, okay, in a formal way, so you can do it, okay, in one of two ways. So in order to do this, you would say, okay, I wanna find the limit as X is approaching two from the left-hand side. And now you can substitute that in. So what that would be, you can say, okay, so this is two. I wanna substitute for X, I'm substituting, that would have been two from the left-hand side. So that's minus H plus three divided by and this would have been two, again, minus H, and now we want H, you know, to tend towards zero. That's what we really wanna be able to do. And now I can, you know, manipulate and compute this out. So if I do that, I would get, pardon me, so I would get four, because I would distribute that in, so I would get four minus two H, okay, this is plus three, and then right here, I would get this all over to minus H in the denominator. Now, as I do this, I'll get four and three. So this is going to be seven, and this is seven minus two H. And then right here, what I have, this is gonna be two minus H. And now as H tends towards zero, these terms are going to fall off. This is gonna be zero, H is tending towards zero. So what do I notice? That this is just seven over two, which is just simply 3.5. You can leave it as a fraction if you like. So that is on the left-hand side. And now we would repeat this. So the limit exists, 
on the left hand side it's 3.5 so that's one condition met now our second condition is that we would repeat this from the right hand side so limit as x is now approaching from the positive side right so from the positive side we would substitute so we would have 2 and this would have been 2 plus h and then divided by this is 2 plus h now notice this is not going to really change for us so 4 plus 2 h and then I'm going to get plus 3 this is all over 2 plus h and again I come up okay with this the only difference is that in this case over there okay and the, from the left hand side I thought this was a minus and this was a minus from the right hand side these two are pluses but it will not matter to me because this tends towards zero right because h tends towards zero so these fall off and once again I have that the limit from the right hand side is equal to 3.5 and now because of the fact that the two are equivalent so they're equal to each other that means that the limit overall exists here so the limit for this is 3.5 so that is just shown for what I did now again you might say wow that seems like a lot of work you know you could have just simply substituted this back into okay your function and you would have gotten if I substituted it in into a, the original function here so if I substituted 2 into there I would get 2 times 2 which is 4 so plus 3 which is 7 divided by 2 which is 3.5 and you would say well you still got 3.5 why didn't you just do that so yes you can certainly kind of cheat in that way and as you get further and further along in calculus and understanding limits you will notice that yeah if the functions are defined okay at your particular values and they're very well behaved again that just comes with experience knowing what is very well behaved for example like a polynomial then you know you can certainly substitute at times but your teachers will most likely ask you to show you this and I remember you know that this was important now it's important to go through those steps because it it shows an understanding of limits if you understand that you're not actually being asked to substitute into a function you're being asked to tend your x value towards in this case 2 you want to get closer and closer to it you know as the limit right approaches 2 so like as your x is approaching 2 what will the limit equal okay with regards to that and the only way to truly show it is you got to go through these steps so that's one particular example that you would have in here now what's interesting that this is also shown notice it's asking us what's the limit as x is approaching zero and within here you know we already identified that hey x is not even defined at zero so how are you trying to find the limit there uh, most likely you know something is going to go wrong here and you want to be able to see this as you are doing your limit so let's take a look so if I you know if I do this and I try to substitute it in let's see what actually happens for this case and then I will also plot it out and of course you know you will see that well we have an asymptote basically at zero and then you can see that the limits will actually not exist so if I want to find the limit as x is now tending towards zero and this is this was for 2x plus 3 all over x and let's say I wanted to do it you know from the left hand side so as so so now I would substitute into my function so I would say 2 and this would have been I'm doing uh, x is 0 right so this is 0 minus h and then plus 3 and this would be all over Okay, and this would be 0 minus okay, h right here. And if I try to manipulate this, no matter what I do, I'm going to get negative 2h plus 3 all over. 
and then here I'm going to get 0 minus h, right? Or just simply minus h. So what do I notice? Well, the numerator, right, as this tends towards 0, okay, so the numerator tends towards 3, so this is going to be tending towards 3, but the denominator, notice, it is tending towards 0, right? Because h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So here, does a limit from the left-hand side exist? No, it does not. It actually will blow up on us. So it's going to be 3 divided by h, which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that overall, this is going to be blowing up on us. It's actually undefined, but it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Again, because it's going to be just tending towards okay, the asymptote at x is equal to 0. Um, and it is going to be, in this case, positive. For anyone who has ever graphed okay, lines, so let's say rational um, functions, okay, you may remember that. So now from the right hand side, you would find exactly the same problem. And I would encourage you, you know, you can try it. So you can say limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side. So you would substitute within here. This you would have been a plus. And if you made it a plus, then you would you would run into exactly the same issue, right? As you're going through. And I apologize. So here, you know, notice this is minus h. So this is going to be not approaching a positive value. This is going to be blowing up to a negative value. And then I guess if we did the same thing and substitute it in for, from the right-hand side, so this would have been that, 0 plus the h, this okay, would have given us you know, 3 on top okay, because the 2h is going to tend towards 0. And then this would have been an h. This would have tended towards a positive k okay, infinity and this would have tended towards a negative infinity um, and again that's not a surprise right so if I graph this out in decimals so I'll be right back here is decimals and this is our you know function okay that we would have so as I'm graphing this out so I would have had I guess f at x is equal to this was 2x and I guess it's going to be 2x plus 3 all over x. And notice, you know, so what happens in here is this is going to be blowing up on us. All right. So, you know, so from the left hand side, it goes to the negative um, infinity. And from the right hand side, it goes to the positive infinity. Um, and that's again, because that's how the function is. And it's actually not defined there. So that is, you know, one particular example with regards to the, you know, finding the actual limits. So we did find, okay, that it exists for this one, but we found that it does not exist for this one. Um, so both the left-hand side and the right-hand side limits do not exist, and therefore the overall limit will not exist. Now, how about this example? So this is an, a neat example. This is example number two. So as you're going through here, so let me copy this. I'll bring it down all the way. So here, this is what we would have. Maybe let me change this, the color so it just pops out okay, from the blue. There you have it. And now, you know, what if we wanted to be able to find if, if the limit exists as, as x is approaching to zero? Now, if you would graph this function, actually what I did, kind of behind the scenes, I can kind of bring this back. I'm going to graph this out for you. Okay, so here it is. And this is how you would input, okay, this style of function because it's piecewise. So for anyone who doesn't know, so in terms of decimals, I always love graphing it in decimals. So if you're, first you put the restriction on your domain, you put a, a colon, so negative five, this is x cubed. You put a comma, and now we have x is equal to zero. And again, a double, so the colon, and then one, so that just maps basically the point. Then put a comma, 
and then now x is greater than zero, okay, the colon and then x squared. And this now maps out our entire function, so that's pretty neat. Okay, now notice it's it's not really showing that that point there for us, but if we want it to go, okay, now notice it will show. Oh, there we go. Okay, zero one. Okay, because it does the jump, right, and then it continues on. So, our, that's how our function is. So it's actually defined everywhere for all R. But now what's the limit as x is approaching zero? So this is a good example because here, if you tried to substitute x equal to zero into your function, the answer is going to be one, right? Because our function, so f2 at zero is equal to one. But that's not what the limit is equal to because the limit is what happens as x is approaching, right? As it's approaching zero, that's what we really want to know. And now, so here, we can do the arithmetic on the left, but we can also, okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to define, so a, okay, for us is going to be zero, okay? So that's because x is going to be approaching zero. And here's, you know, what you can nicely do for yourself. So h um, equal to, and, you know, let's start it off at one. We want to make H very small, you know, so I'll put a lot of these and then from one. So, you know, that H, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do is, you know, we're going to go from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and now we're going to be plotting the point. So here, plotting the point, what we will have, this is going to be A, so A is zero, so from the left-hand side, so minus h, and then substitute into our function, so f2, and this is gonna be a minus h. So notice that that's where the point is, you know, so it's lying there, you can see it. Now I'm gonna label it so that you can see the value. Now I'm gonna do that from the right-hand side as well, so you can do that, it's pretty cool, and make it very visual, f2, a, plus h, okay, so now notice that's from the right-hand side. Let's go back, and now it's approaching. So now, as h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, notice where it's approaching. You know, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, right? So that's a neat thing that you can see there happening. So the limit of this is actually zero but the function at zero is not zero, it's one. It has been defined that way. And that is the whole idea behind limits and that's why we have to be careful of how we set these things up. So again, you know, if I was working this out and I was trying to find, and let's say your teachers asked you, you know, how would you show this? Then I would say, all right, so we want limit of x, okay? so approaching zero and now what we would do is if we want it from the left hand side so from the left hand side we would be in this arena right because it's to the left of the zero so we would have to substitute negative five and then this would have been zero minus h cubed that's what we would get for that now, if I work this out, this is gonna be negative five, and then you're going to get negative h cubed, so the negative and the negative, so that will make this positive, and this is gonna be h cubed. Not that it matters, because as h tends towards zero here, so as h goes to zero, this just goes to zero. Well, and five times zero is just zero, so the limit from the left is zero, which is, which is what we saw in the simulation there on the graph. And you would do the same thing, limit as x is approaching zero from the right-hand side. And now if you substitute this in, from the right-hand side, be careful because from the right-hand side, we're over here. That's on the right-hand side of zero. And that, so we would substitute in, and this would have been zero plus h, and I guess it was squared, 
and that if you work that out this is just h squared and as h tends towards zero well this just goes to zero but notice what happens well my left hand limit exists and it's equal to zero my right hand limit exists and it's also zero and if they both exist and they're equal to each other then the overall limit exists and in our case is equal to zero which is not the case right if we just substituted zero into here because that would have told us it's one and that's the whole idea behind limits that we want to be able to discuss. So that's another example that you would see with limits. Now, I, I placed the, uh, one more example okay, within here. So here it is. And it also highlights a very nice and neat, important thing. I'm going to copy this. And let's put it in here. And this is going to show us that, hey, wait a minute. The limits just do not exist at all. So here is another function and it is piecewise. I'm going to actually, okay, let me just remove, you know, this, this function in here. Let's put a, a different function. So I'm going to define this one for us. F3 X equals again. So open bracket. So X greater or equal to one, put the double colon three X plus one comma. And now for x less than 1, double colon, x squared, all right? So this is what I'll have. That's my function. So if I shift this out of the way, so notice this function looks kind of funky. Notice that there is what we call now a discontinuity, okay, as we go in here. And hold on a second, you know, so if I go, go back in here, instead of plotting this is going to make it easier for myself. I'm going to just put three as my third function. So three in there. Now, where do I want it? I want it at one. So I'm going to put a is equal to one like this. Okay. And now let's, you know, get it started from all the way over there. And if I play this, notice that yes, indeed, as H gets smaller and smaller. So notice it is approaching. So from the left-hand side, right? It's going to be approaching a value. Okay. And we can see that. And then from the right hand side is going to be also approaching a value, but they're two different values that we're going to have. So that's pretty neat, right? So it looks like one value is approaching one and then the other value is going to be approaching, um, four. That's what we can see there. Now, if you wanted to work this out, so if you had this, and again, if the teachers asked you, all right, well, prove, okay, what the limits are, do they exist or not? Now, in this case, the limits will not exist because the simulation is showing us that they're actually not equivalent to each other. The left-hand limit exists, the right-hand limit exists, but they're not equal. And if they're not equal, then the overall limit does not exist, does not exist if they're not equal. Now, if I did that, let's try that. So from the left-hand side, I would be right here. And now if I substitute in, so this is going to be the limit as X is approaching one from the left-hand side. And now I would substitute. So this, my A is one. Right, left hand side means one minus the H. That's what I have there. Now I'm squaring it. So this, again, you can work this out. This would have been one minus two H plus H squared. You don't have to work it out because this is tending towards zero. So this is gonna be tending towards one squared, which indeed is the case. So this is equal to one. That's Limit exists, we know what it is. From the right-hand side, as X is approaching one from the right-hand side, now we are on this. And here, so three X plus one, this is gonna be three. Now we substitute one plus H plus the one. 
that's going to be 3 plus 3h plus 1, which is 4 plus 3h. Now, as h tends towards 0, this basically tends towards 4. That is now the limit. Are they equivalent? No. They both exist, but they're not equivalent. And if they're not equivalent, then therefore this limit does not exist. So uh, the limit as x towards 1 does not exist for this function. And that's an awesome thing. You can see that within the actual simulation. You can create that simulation on your own and actually see what's happening. Now, the final item here with regards to continuity, because now we've talked about all these limits, and then the other component was, okay, well, if you talk about limits, how about this? You know, is a function continuous? Okay, is a function continuous at x? Well, what has to hold true? So you saw all of these limits. Sometimes they exist, sometimes they do not. And in terms of continuity at x is equal to a point, these are the conditions. For the limit to hold means left-hand side exists, right-hand side exists, and third, they're equal to each other. If that is true, then the limit exists at A. When is a function continuous at A? Well, the actual function has to be defined at A. So FA is defined, which means that A is in the domain of our function. So that's number one. Number two, that the limit as x is approaching a of the function exists. That's criteria number two, which we just worked out on all, on all of those examples. And the third criteria, you could probably guess that f at a has to be equal to the limit. If that is true, then we actually say that the function is continuous. So we need those three conditions. So if I go back to those examples, so if I go back to all of these examples, you know, so what did we say? Well, so is a function, let's say, continuous here at 2? So what we would have to do is, well, first of all, is 2 okay, in the domain of the function? And in this case, it is. We can indeed substitute 2 into here, and we'll get our answer. So if I would take that right here, f at 2 is equal, 2 times 2 is 4, plus the 3 is 7 over 2, which is 3.5. We know that it is defined there. We found the limit, so we know that the limit was actually 3.5. We already did that. And notice the third condition, we needed these two to be equal, and they are. Therefore, the function is continuous at A. Now, is that true for this? Well, number one, the function is not continuous at zero because it's not even defined. So it already breaks the first criteria. It's not defined there. F at zero is not defined. Right in this or this case f1. So this function one is not defined at zero, and also the limit didn't exist. So it is not a continuous function. It is actually broken, right? So at zero. So that was for the first one. 
For the second example that we had, which was this example, you know, if we take a look, so this, notice we tried at zero. So first of all, is the function defined at zero? Yes, it is defined at zero. They defined it as one. So it's clearly defined at zero. Does the limit exist at zero? Yeah, we did that. We saw that it was equal to zero. However, for continuity at zero, we would need the limit and the function at zero to be equivalent, and they're not. Because the function at zero is equal to zero, that's what we had there. Uh, sorry, the function at zero is equal to one, but the limit at zero was equal to zero. So they're not equal. So what does that tell us? That it is not continuous at zero because it does not satisfy the third criteria where the function that has to be defined and equivalent to the limit at that point. For the third example, which was this example, The function is defined here at one. We can see that it's actually equal to four. We can substitute that in, it's equal to four. The limit, however, does not exist. And if the limit does not exist, we can't be continuous at one. And that is not a surprise at all, right? Because when we we're drawing these out right here, we can clearly see there's a discontinuity, right? At that particular point, it's purely broken, the function. So the two limits are completely different, okay? Therefore, we cannot be continuous. So that is the introduction to this. Now, it's a long introduction because I gave you a lot of examples and I try to explain from the left hand from the right hand, approaching the limits, how to find them, you know, how would you do it by hand? How can you simulate it on something like Desmos for yourself to be able to see? Now, what is interesting as I close this video is that if you want the function to be continuous, not just at one point, but you want it, you want to call the function a continuous function, then these three criteria have to hold at all points of X. So the entire domain and the entire domain that you have would have to be R. So the function would have to have be defined for the entire domain R and at every single point it would have to be continuous. It would have to satisfy this. Right? And you might say, oh my God, but there's infinite amount of points. True, there are some functions which you will see, you know, that continuity, for example, like polynomials is very easy to be able to see. So this now completes okay, the video itself. I hope that those examples have been useful. You know, take a look at it, pause it, um, and hopefully we'll see you back. Welcome to limits and continuity in calculus. Bye everybody.